my Yarny friends, I'm Sarah Satch, and welcome or welcome back to my crochet channel. Today's video, I'm going to show you how to crochet this super cute, fun, and a little bit silly Christmas gnome that is a TP or toilet paper cover. It's super cute and super easy. No fancy stitches. We have a little bit of front post stitches here, but really for the most part, it's stitched in double crochets. I'll show you how to make that cute little nose and add a beard and make a pom-pom. One thing I did notice as I was designing my Christmas TP cover gnome is that the toilet paper that I bought a few years ago is taller than the toilet paper that I've been purchasing now. Um, so you want to keep that in mind when you're making your cover because you don't want it to be too long. I mean, if it does, it'll curl underneath, but you know, just make sure that you test it out on the toilet paper that you have now to make sure that it's not going to be too long. To make your Christmas gnome TP cover, you're going to need some medium weight number four yarns. Now I decided not to go with just the traditional colors to make it have a look of a little bit more of an elf opposed to just Christmas colors. You can use any medium weight number four acrylic yarns. I'm going to be using this yarn. This is a tweed. It's red, it's called red tweed. And I'm going to be using this for the sweater portion of my gnome. Then I'm going to make the hat and the trim using these yellows and greens. So I'm using, I love this yarn from Hobby Lobby. The yellow is Vanna's Choice and the green is also, I love this yarn from Hobby Lobby. It's just not a tweed. Then you also need just a little bit of a, of a medium beige for the nose. And I decided to use white for the beard on this one that we're making today and this one I used like a beige just to give it a different look okay so you need about one and a half ounces or about a hundred yards of three different colors of yarn and then just a small amount of white for the beard and a small amount of beige for the nose now I also added a couple of fun buttons and I've got a snowman here a Christmas tree and a gift I don't know if I'm going to use those or not. Um, now there are two ways you can attach those. You can sew them on if they have the little shank on the back or the holes like this Christmas tree has the holes that you can do that to. But if you have some embellishments that, that are not buttons, they don't have the shank on the back, the little loop and there's no way to put them on, you can always use an E6000 to attach those buttons. Okay, just remember an E6000 is going to take a little bit longer to dry um, than, say, a hot glue. And you can put them on with hot glue as well. I just prefer not to use anything with hot glue in the bathroom because you can get steam and cause that hot glue to get gooey. Just keep that in mind when you're choosing your buttons and what you want to add on your gnome. The other thing to remember is make sure that the needle that you choose can get through those holes. See, this one barely gets through. But of course, with the shanks, they get through nice and easy. So it's kind of up to you and what buttons that you have on hand, you know, or even if you want to use them. I use this word that says jingle. It is a button. And then I added a bell just for, you know, jingle bell. I thought it was fun. All right. We're going to be crocheting with our eye hook, which is a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. And of course, you're going to need a needle for weaving in ends and sewing on your nose and your buttons. And then of course you're gonna need a pair of scissors. And the last thing you're going to need, of course, is a fresh roll of TP. We're going to begin with the top of the gnome's hat and work our way down to the sweater. We're going to begin with our slip knot and we're going to chain five chains. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to join this chain five into a circle. So we'll put our tail of yarn over our hook and pull it through that loop. Snug that down and make that stay knot. If you would prefer to do the magic circle here, you certainly can. 
we're going to put our hook in, pull up a loop, and chain three. One, two, three. This chain three counts as our first double crochet. And now we're going to stitch five double crochets. Yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through the first two, yarn over and go through the second two. So our chain three counts as one, and I've stitched two more. There we go. So there's four, five, and six. We stitched our chain three, and then we stitched five more double crochets, so we have a total of six double crochets. We're going to join to that chain three with a slip stitch and chain three. And so for row or round one, we have six double crochets joined to the chain three and chain three. For row two, our chain three counts as one double crochet. In the next stitch, we're going to stitch two double crochets, one and two. In the next stitch, we're just going to stitch one. Then in the next stitch, we're going to stitch two. One and two. Then in the next stitch, we're going to just stitch one. Then in the next stitch, we're going to stitch two double crochets. One and two two, and then in that last stitch we're just going to stitch one double crochet. We're going to join to the chain three with a slip stitch, but we're not going to chain three because we're going to be changing colors. But the next thing that we need to do is flip this out because this is the outside of our hat. And so now we're going to be stitching around the outside of our hat. So row one, we had six double crochets. Row two, we have nine. We're not going to chain three. We're going to bring in our color two, which I'm using this yellow. And we're going to chain three. We're not going to cut our color one. We're going to leave it attached and we'll be trailing those colors up on the inside of our gnome hat. So our chain three counts as one double crochet and then we'll stitch two double crochets in the next stitch. One and two. Then we'll stitch one double crochet in the next and two in the next. One and two two, one in the next, and then two double crochets in the next, one and two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 12, and then the last stitch is our 13th stitch. And so for row three, we have 13 double crochets. We're going to join to our chain three, and we'll go ahead and chain three because we're not changing colors. All right, now for row four, we're basically doing the same thing that we did on row three. Our chain three counts as one, then we're going to stitch two double crochets in the next double crochet. One double crochet in the next, two double crochets in the next. And we'll repeat this working one and two all the way around. One double crochet in the next, two in the next, and repeat all the way around and join back to our chain three. I completed round three or row three. I joined to my chain three, but I did not chain three because we're going to change colors. So I'm going to bring my green back in, leaving my yellow attached, and chain three. 
Now, for row five, we're going to just stitch one double crochet in each double crochet around. On row four, we had 19 double crochets. So we'll have the same on row five. So our chain three counts is one, and we're going to just stitch one double crochet in each of those double crochets around. Whoops, get in there. <laughs> All righty, one double crochet in each of our double crochets all the way around and join back to our chain three. One double crochet in each of my double crochets around. So I again have 19 double crochets. I'm going to join to my chain three with a slip stitch. I'm going to chain three and I'm going to repeat row five. One double crochet in each of the double crochets working all the way around and again join back to my chain three. I completed row six. We stitched one double crochet in each double crochet around so we still have 19 double crochets on row six. I didn't chain three because I'm bringing in my color two. And remember I'm stitching my rows, changing colors every two rows. You can change colors as often or not at all that you want to for your gnome. Use your imagination on what you got in your yarn stash. All right, so let's go ahead and chain three. And we're going to go back to doing one and two. So our chain three counts as one, so we'll stitch two double crochets in the next. One and two. one double crochet in the next stitch and two double crochets in the next. And so we're increasing on this row. One double crochet in the next and two double crochets in the next. One and two. And so we'll repeat this working all the way around this row and join back to our chain three stitching one double crochet in the next, two double crochets in the next, and repeat all the way around. I completed row seven stitching one and two, one and two. We're going to join to our chain three with a slip stitch and we're going to chain three. Now for row eight we're going to be increasing a bunch because that's where we're going to spread it out on the top of our TP roll. So we're going to be placing two double crochets in each of those double crochet stitches. So we want a double crochet in the same stitch as our chain three, and then two double crochets in each of the double crochets around. And so on row seven, we had 28 double crochets. On row eight, we're going to have 56 because we're doubling the amount of double crochets. So two double crochets in each of those double crochets around. And as you work, you'll already see that it's starting to really flare out so that it will sit on top of our toilet paper roll. All right, so two double crochets in each double crochet around, and then again, we'll join back to our chain three. I completed row eight, stitching two double crochets in each double crochet around. It looks a little like a witch's hat at this point, but I wanted to show you how it looks. It's really flared out and that's so that it sits on top of that toilet paper roll nicely. We're finished with our yellow, so we're gonna go ahead and cut that, but we're going to bring back in our green. And I also wanted to show you on the inside of the hat where I trailed those yarns up. All right, now let's bring back in our green. 
snug that down there we go and chain three one two and three now on this row we're going to be working in the back loops only and what that means is along the edge of your work you'll see the loops that we stitch in we usually go in and stitch through both loops we're not going to be stitching in these these are our front loops we're only going to be stitching in the back loops and those are the loops that are away from you all right so we'll yarn over we'll go in just the back loop and stitch one double crochet in each of those double crochets around stitching in the back loop only and the purpose of this is so it gets a nice sharp curve on the edge where we place this on our toilet paper roll you'll have a row of stitches here that are the loops that we didn't stitch in and that's going to make it sit nice on our roll of toilet paper all right so we're not increasing anymore we're just stitching one double crochet in each of the double crochets around stitching in the back loops only I completed row 9 and you can see where I stitched in those back loops only because I have this line here of loops that I didn't stitch in I joined to my chain 3 and now for row 10 we're just going to stitch one double crochet in each of those double crochets around we're not stitching in the back loops anymore it was just for that one row to give us a nice edge on the top of our cover all right so one double crochet in each of those double crochets around and then again we'll join to our chain three I completed row 10 stitching one double crochet in each of those double crochets around now we're finished with our color two so I'm going to cut my yarn and bring in my color three and I'm using this red that is a tweed for the sweater of my gnome we will chain three and now we're going to create the sweater portion of our gnome TP cover all right and the way this row works is we're going this counts as one double crochet and then I'm going to double crochet in the next stitch now I'm going to stitch what's called a front post double crochet in these next two stitches we normally stitch up here but we're going to be stitching around the post of the double crochet we're still stitching a double crochet we're just placing it in a different place so we're going to yarn over we're going to go around the post and stitch our double crochet and then we'll go around the next post of the next double crochet and stitch a double crochet then we'll go to our next stitch and stitch one double crochet in the regular spot for two stitches and this is the way that row 11 works we're going to be repeating one double crochet in the next two and one front post double crochet in the next two and repeat and I wanted to use this texture because it pulls it in just a little bit for shaping but also it resembles a Christmas sweater I want my gnome to be in a Christmas sweater so here is our two regular double crochets and now we're going to stitch around the front post of the next two double crochets and repeat one double crochet in the next two and we're stitching those in the regular spot and then two double crochets around the next two front post stitches I completed 
row 11, one double crochet in the next two, one double crochet stitching in the front post in the next two, and repeat all the way around. All right, so our last two stitches were two front post stitches. I'm going to join to the chain three and chain three. And now for row 12, we're going to double crochet in that next stitch because our chain three counts as our first. Then we'll front post around the front posts from the previous row. So we're repeating one double crochet in the next two and one front post in the next two. So double crochet in the next two. There we go and one front post double crochet in the next two. One and two. And repeat. There we go. And one front post in the next two. And you'll notice how it sort of pulls it in and helps it have a nice shape that will fit our teepee just right, as well as look like a Christmas sweater. And again, we're just going to repeat this all the way around and join back to our chain three. I completed row 12, which is that second row of two double crochets, two front post double crochets, repeat all the way around, and join to our chain three and chain three. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to do four more rows to complete our Christmas sweater for our gnome. So what we're going to do is we're going to repeat row 12 for four more rows. And again, row 12 is two double crochets, two front post double crochets, repeat all the way around, join and chain three. So we'll be repeating row 12 for four more rows. I completed those four additional rows, so I have six rows. Before we add the trim, because we have one more row that is just going to be a trim to represent the bottom band of our um, gnome's sweater, I want you to take the roll of toilet paper that you're going to use, and let's move the hook out for a second here. Don't want to lose that loop, and slide that on. And the reason I say that is the next row is, is going to be one row of half double crochets. If you have taller row, uh, rolls of toilet paper, you may want to do an additional row. Because remember at the beginning of the video, I talked about how the rolls are shorter now than they used to be. So I have completed those four additional rows as we talked about. I'm going to cut off my red because I'm finished with that. And I'm going to bring back in my color one. And this is going to make a band around the bottom of our TP to look like the bottom band of our Christmas sweater for our gnome. All right, now we're only going to chain two instead of three. And that's because we're going to stitch one half double crochet in each of those stitches around. So yarn over, go in the next stitch, pull up a loop, Yarn over and go through all three of those loops. That's our half double crochet. And I am stitching over these tails of yarn. I like to do that, and then I can come back in and weave those in with my needle. All right, so I've stitched over them a little bit. I'm going to just put them aside and stitch one half double crochet in each of those stitches around the bottom edge of my TP cover. I have completed that row of half double crochets. I'm going to join to that chain two with a slip stitch and tie off. 
I'm going to grab that loop and bring it to the back so we have a nice finished edge. And now I need to take a few minutes and weave in all these ends with my needle. And then we're going to make the gnome's nose. All right, let's make our gnome's nose. We're going to begin with a slip knot. And we're going to chain three chains. One, two, three. Now we're going to stitch eight half double crochets in the third chain from the hook. One, two, three. So we're going to go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, and go through all three. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. We're going to join to that first half double crochet with a slip stitch. And now we're going to chain two and stitch two half double crochets in each of those. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen half double crochets. We're going to join to that first half double crochet with a slip stitch and then we're going to tie off leaving ourselves about 12 inches of yarn for sewing it onto our gnome. All right, so let's go ahead and tie that off. We're going to push that out, but before we completely do that, we want to close that hole in the center. So we'll thread that onto our needle and we'll just stitch around that first row of stitches, gathering that hole closed. And this is on the inside of the nose. We don't want a hole in the center of our gnome's nose. All righty. Make sure that's going to stay put. And we'll clip that stitch. To make the beard on our gnome, we're going to need to cut 30 strands of yarn that are 10 inches long. And this ruler is about 10 inches long and I like to use it. Um, but you can make a template that is 10 inches long and cut it if, any way that you want to. So what I'm going to do is I need 30 strands that are 10 inches long. So I'm going to wrap this around my ruler. So that's three, four, five, six. So I've wrapped it around some. I'm going to need more, of course. And then I cut the bottom. And so here are my strands. This one needs to be cut again. And don't worry if they're longer than you need because we're going to trim them up so they look nice on our gnome. Okay, so what you want to do is determine where you want to put your beard. I like to look for the back of it I can't seem to find it right now. <laughs> and then center it on the front. And you're going to need to choose 10 stitches. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. This works nice. And we're going to be using the double crochets to hook these on. All right, let me move these out of the way. So you're going to go around the double crochet. And you'll add one on that row. Then you'll go to the next row below and add another. And then you'll go on the next row below and add another. And I just sort of set those aside. Then I go to the next row and do the same thing. One. Two, 
to there we go three okay and then we'll continue doing this until we have all 30 of our beard pieces of yarn on and it doesn't matter if you're putting them in a regular double crochet or a front post double crochet because you'll have to do it in both in order to fill it in so you have a nice full gnome beard all right so I'm just going to keep on working on this one and you keep on working on yours till we have 30 strands of yarn across 10 rows. All right, so you're going to stitch 10 rows across and three rows down. So I've placed my strands of yarn on that are 10 inches long for two, four, six, eight, ten rows across and three rows down. And this is the size of my gnome beard. Now, if you want it to be wider, you can do more rows. If you want it to be fuller, you can do more rows. But we're going to need to trim this next. And we need to be careful when we trim our beard not to cut our stitching or it'll all come unraveled and we don't want that. And so what I do is I hold it out like this and I just cut it straight across like that, sort of fluff it up a little. And you can take your needle and separate your strands of yarn if you want to, to make it a little more fuzzy. I just didn't and I don't really want to. <clears throat> I did trim mine a little on the sides on my other one, so it's kind of rounded, but I'm not going to on this one. All right. Now, one thing you do want to do is make sure everything's pulled snug and tight and that all your strands are not going to come off. Now, the next thing we're going to do is grab that nose and we're going to stitch it right there. All right. So I've got my needle. I'm going to thread that on. And we want to sort of pooch the nose up. And so what I do we want it to be on the edge of the green row and we're going to be stitching through the beard. It's going to be a little bit different than what you've done, but I'm going to go down and come up over here. I want to try to keep that centered and we're going to sort of gather it in as we go. Then we'll go back and then we'll go forward, trying to keep that nose centered and poochy. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to turn it a little bit and see how it's starting to pooch out there. If you want to, you can add a little bit of extra yarn in there or even a little bit of uh, polyfill, but I don't. I don't think it's necessary, but if you want to, you certainly can. And then once I like the way that it looks and it's pooching up nicely, I just stitch back around it, making sure it's going to stay put. The first row going around was basically to gather it. The second row is, you know, just to make sure it's going to stay put. All right, so we've stitched around twice. I'm going to go in the hat in here. There we go. And just make sure that's weaved in nice and securely. So it doesn't come undone. All right, I'm going to give that a clip. 
you can use a template, you can use a pom-pom maker, but I'm just going to use my hand and whip up a smallish, easy pom-pom. So I just put the three colors that I'm using in my hand and I just start wrapping it about 25 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I've wrapped it around a bunch of times. I lost count. 20, 25, something like that, depending on how thick you want your pom-pom to be. All right, so there's that. I'm going to take the color that is the top of my hat and cut a strand of yarn about 12 inches and just slide that through those loops and tie a knot. <clears throat> try another knot just to make sure that's going to hold all right now I have this little container that I always use for making pom-poms so it catches all my strands of yarn all right I've got my big scissors here and I'm just going to cut that to begin with across the bottom and then I take it and I push it forward and I cut it all right now this may not be the size that you want. You might want a little bit tighter or more floofy, but I'm going to cut it down a little more. I want a little bit smaller on this one. Trim those edges and floof it out. And I really like that one. Now, I can see I have a loop that needs to be cut. And maybe a couple of extras here. Just trim it up. All right, now we'll just take our gnome and pull those strands. And I like to go next to the center, not down the center. I'll grab one, then I'll go next to it over here. There we go. And grab that other one and pull it to the inside. Get up in here. There we go. And we'll just tie that pom-pom on securely so it's not going anywhere. There we go. And we'll just clip that string. And now our silly gnome is ready to decorate your bathroom. So here is the gnome toilet paper cover that we made. I added a little snowman button because I thought it would bring out the white in the beard. And here's the one we did in the Christmas sparkle colors. It's a perfect fit and he is so cute. I love them both. It's a good thing I have more than one bathroom. <laughs> One thing I wanted to show you is that this one, I placed the nose up just a little bit higher and I didn't like it as well. And so that's why I placed the beard and the nose a little bit lower on this one. That's the placement of the nose and the beard is totally up to you. You are going to get a longer beard if it's up higher. It's just placement. You can decide what you like best and what colors that you like best as well. I hope you'll make some of these and have a super fun time.